The Secrets Keep Coming in the Forgotten Kingdom DLC for Remnant 2. And today's video is no different. I'm gonna show you guys how to get the Burden Hardest to Bear achievement, which was my last achievement for a total of 60 out of 60 on Steam. And I'm also gonna show you how to get the Profane Soul Stone, the Soul Stone, and the Profane Heart. All right, so let's dive right in. First, we're starting in the Infected Abyss. You may recognize this from the one-shot DLC adventure, but you can get it randomly with any Yesha or Forgotten Kingdom DLC adventure role. This is the dungeon with all the root nexuses that you have to destroy to get through, and you have a curse the whole time as well. I'm sure you guys recognize it. The reward for this dungeon is the Profane Soul Stone. So you may have this sitting around in your inventory, and if you do, you can skip to the next step. However, if you don't, the dungeon is pretty simple to complete. You just have to make your way through the path and kill the root nexus when you get to a dead end. Just be careful though, because the final root nexus spawns a lot of elites. They progressively get harder and harder. So make sure you're prepared and take your time if you need to, because the ads will spawn in waves. So definitely take your time and kill everything and go through. There's also a shortcut door in case you wipe and need to come back. You're also gonna find the crystal staff sitting there right before the final opening. Once you find the mini checkpoint at the bottom there, you're gonna see that there's a blue NPC symbol above you so you can make your way up to that NPC. And if this is your first time going through the infected abyss, then you want to submit to him in order to get his profane soul stone. The Profane Soul Stone increases summons damage by 30% and their movement speed by 30%. However, it reduces total damage reduction by 10% per active summon. But we're going to be able to get rid of that negative part when we go cleanse this Soul Stone. But before I show you that, let's talk about the other option with this NPC, which is to actually fight him. I like power. I'll submit or I won't submit to the root ever. I don't know. What should we do? This is a clip from my Twitch stream on day one when we encountered this guy. Quietly. Obviously, we chose to fight him first. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I hope you get some ammo. Uh, oh, we're out of the scene here. Oh! Oh, and he has- oh, sweet. Oh, and he has four modifiers! Yeah! Oh no, and he's a little- Oh god, you gotta be kidding me, we gotta play with this shit. Oh no! So as you guys can see, he turns into an aberration, the emissary, and he's one of those statues that freezes until you look away and then he's active again. So it was a very interesting fight, it was pretty difficult, um, and my turret came in clutch, I will say that. However, when you beat him, you're going to get the nearsighted mutator, which in my opinion is a pretty strong mutator, especially if you are one that likes shotguns or challenger, because it's going to increase your range damage of that weapon by 10 to 20% to enemies within seven meters. Level 10, it's going to increase the ranged critical chance of the weapon by 10% to enemies within seven meters. All right, so back on track with the Profane Soul Stone, we're gonna head over to Labyrinth, which is gonna need to be in your campaign save. This can be separate from where your abyss is. It can also even be in somebody else's game entirely. So you can move between campaign and adventure for this. But once you have Profane Soul Stone, you're gonna go up to the Keeper in the Labyrinth, which means you need to do the cube boss, etc. You're gonna interact with the Keeper and all you have to do is say, I should get moving. And he's gonna notice that you're wearing that profane soul stone and he's gonna give you an option if you want to cleanse it, keep it, give it to him, etc. For the first decision, we are going to actually keep the amulet. Now it's important that you come here and you tell him that you're gonna keep it because otherwise you're not gonna get anything when we go back to that NPC at the infected abyss. So you're gonna tell the keeper, no thanks, I'm just gonna keep it. And then we're gonna head back over to the infected abyss dungeon, to that mini checkpoint, which you should be able to just fast travel straight back to it if that was the last place you visited. Once you're in front of the NPC here, you wanna make sure you keep that necklace on, don't change the necklace, and talk to the NPC. He's gonna know that you didn't give it to the keeper, that you actually kept it, so he's gonna reward you and turn that profane soul stone 
into a relic called the profane heart. So you're going to say, take it and give him the profane soul stone. And in turn, he's going to reward you with the profane heart. Now the profane heart gets innate 3% lifesteal bonus and on use it increases all your lifesteal efficacy by 50% for 15 seconds. So this is a pretty strong relic and it's going to be right up there with Tranquil Heart for me, which is kind of perfect, I guess, that they both look similar but different colors and they both have similar names. But I think this is going to be an awesome relic to run on a lot of different builds. So if you want to cleanse that soul stone, you're going to have to run the Infested Abyss back again. So you want to go back for the third time because one time you fought him, one time you got the Profane Soul Stone didn't give it to the keeper and then brought it back here. Now the third time we're actually going to get the soul stone and bring it to the keeper. So the third time you go back, you get that profane soul stone and then you're going to go back to that labyrinth save that you had. And then we're going to go up wearing the profane soul stone, talk to the keeper and then hand it to the keeper for him to cleanse. Once you do that, he's going to give you the soul stone amulet which basically just removes the negative aspect of the profane soul stone. It's going to increase your summons damage by 30% and your summons movement speed by 30%. And then because this amulet is just a better version of the other amulet, it's up to you if you want to go back to the infested abyss again and acquire the profane soul stone again. I know for a lot of us, we probably just want it in our collection so that we get 100% the game and I totally get that. So you do you. Cleansing the profane soul stone in to the soul stone is also going to give you the achievement the burden hardest to bear this has made a difficult choice and you can see the little icon down there is the profane soul stone i gotta be honest i'm not really a lore master in remnant 2 so i'm not sure what the difficult choice was to give it to the keeper and not let the pan have it it must be something to do with, you know, we're taking something from his home and basically giving it to this keeper that is creating this like simulation. I don't know. If you know what's going on, definitely leave it in the comments below, especially if you made it this far in the video, you are a real one. A lot of rewards in this dungeon that are really, really good. The mutator, the relic, the amulet, they're all amazing rewards. So I would highly recommend doing all outcomes for this dungeon. If you found this guide helpful, consider subscribing because we are making a whole bunch of remnant content here on the YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.